But when we think about the business case for smarter collaboration, think about this. Um, when you're serving customers or clients, maybe you have, you're in an organization that has different kinds of products or services. How beneficial is it to your customers that you're joining up in order to deliver them integrated services versus selling them or serving them with one unit at a time? Well, what we have decided to, to study here is to look at revenues. Now, the assumption here is that your, your customers are really smart. They don't pay for value unless they really perceive it. So revenues here are a proxy for how much value are you adding to your customers? The numbers across the bottom of that chart, they, rec they represent the number of business lines per client. So how many of your business units joined up in a given year to serve each of your clients? And as you see here, those yellow bars, they grow and grow and grow and grow. That's how much average revenue was generated from customers that are served by one business unit versus six or even 10. And this finding has been replicated across dozens and dozens of organizations around the planet now, ranging from professional service firms like um, accounting firms or law firms and engineering firms to um, retail banks and a whole host of other kinds of companies. Now, it shouldn't surprise you that as you sell more services or products to a customer, the revenue grows. But look at that black line under firm A. It swoops up, sort of Nike-like, right? That shows an exponential curve and the data fit it really well. In other words, every business unit that joins forces to serve a customer adds so much more value than that business unit would have done on its own. And they add extra value from the business units that are already serving clients. If all you were doing was cross-selling, in other words, you're in there selling one product and you recommend that the client buys the next thing and then that team comes in and sells their thing, and the next and the next. If you're not truly collaborating in order to find innovative solutions, in order to spot problems before your clients even know to ask, then the numbers just add up like these blue bars, right? It's one plus one plus one equals three. If you're engaging in truly smart collaboration, smarter collaboration, then you've got exponential growth. And here's why. When we interviewed the CFO of a giant Fortune 100 company, the CFO said margins rise with complexity. The, the, the complexity from all of these different problems that are facing organizations right now. Think about, we've all heard about lots of economic headwinds coming your way. If you treat that just as an economy problem, if you bring in just the finance function to say what's going to happen, just the number crunchers, you're going to miss all kinds of things that really matter to your business. You're going to need to bring in people who understand consumer behavior when they're under stress. You're going to need to think about the supply chain effects. You're going to need to think about the technological effects. What's that going to do? All right, so complexity grows um, across these different functions and perspectives. And if you can team up different business lines and services to help customers tackle those complex issues, you're going to provide more value and generate better financial results. So hopefully that gives you a, a sense of the revenue opportunity out of smarter collaboration. But let's talk about another opportunity that's critical to all of us, and that's innovation. Because collaboration and innovation are inextricably tied up. We have more than four decades of information from the US Patent Office. And that what and what we see is that innovation is becoming more and more of a team sport. So if you look at this first bottom section of the graph, this big blue section of the graph, what we see is over the last 40 years, there's been a 50% decrease in solo inventors. Whereas that gray section reflects three-person patent teams. That's more than double over the last 40 years. And that top blue section, seven-person patent teams, has had more than a nine-fold increase over that period. Why would that be? Complexity, right? The problems that people are solving where people are getting patents are more and more complex problems. And as Heidi described, as individuals get more specialized, they need to partner up with people with different specializations, different expertise in order to really understand 
and crack these problems and develop the kinds of innovations that result in a, in a patent. Excuse me, Ivan, I'm going backwards here. Don't worry. You know, we worked with a, um, a major life sciences company that was struggling, particularly with innovation and time to market. They felt passionately that speed to market was critical because they are literally saving lives. But their organization was very siloed. As they went through the drug development and the drug approval process, they, you know, they would do their research, they would then do their product development, they would do their marketing, they would do their you know, uh, regulatory approval process. And it was very siloed. And those handoffs was taking an enormous amount of time. It was taking years. So they decided to adopt the principles of smarter collaboration and completely reorganized the way they work into cross-functional teams, right? And so you can see here some of the quotes. They eliminated these artificial organizational boundaries. They broke down those silos. They got the right people involved in the problem at the beginning of the process so that they could really have a vision of the end-to-end -end journey that they were going through. And that organizational transformation and way of developing uh, drugs resulted in a 50% reduction in the amount of time it took to get FDA approval for their uh, for their medicines. Absolutely. And you know, Ivan as we were writing the book and thinking about all of the different kinds of benefits that stem from smarter collaboration. You know, we we talked about the financial benefits here are the innovation benefits. We also talked about reducing the amount of risk across the enterprise. And there are a whole lot of talent-related benefits as well. Engagement, the ability to attract and retain uh, people. And you know, so many of those we could measure separately, but they do seem to reinforce one another. So Ivan, as I was listening to you talk about innovation, that's something that really jazzes people up. Um, people get excited about doing um, important work, and I can't think of anything more important than saving lives, right? We look at the smarter collaboration, exactly. yeah, and, and here, you know, we're talking about kids getting life-saving medicine 11 months earlier than they would have otherwise. It's, it's absolutely fascinating, and the people who are working across this company, this life sciences company, um, can feel incredible um, pride and sense of purpose in what they're doing. So smarter collaboration isn't just about the the dollars and cents or the the euros or the pounds. It's about what you can accomplish that's really different. Uh, I'll acknowledge there's some great questions coming into the Q and A bar, and Ivan, to um, we'll uh, we'll let people know that you're going to be coming on in just a few minutes. People are really excited to talk about the the third parties and uh, and collaboration across organizations. So. Um, just foreshadowing for those of you who are curious about that topic, we are absolutely coming to it um, to, uh, very soon. So we wanted to look at the question that people have around um, what's in it for me? I mean, maybe that isn't occurring to you, but I'd be surprised because once we start talking about all of these benefits at the, at the company level, you know, higher revenues and profits and faster innovation, people are like, okay, great. But what about me? Am I better off or worse off if I'm engaging in this kind of, of behavior? Because all of us know, let's be honest, it's not easy. Getting to you know build out a big network, figuring out how to collaborate with people, especially if they're you know working remotely and you're in the office or vice versa, or you're both remote. You know, so many organizations now have people, um, many people who have never actually met each other in person. And so it's hard to establish those relationships and the trust required for collaboration. And people want to know, is it worth it? So we wanted to answer that question as well. We dove into our data um, with the help of one of our phenomenal research associates, John Ng. He was able to find two people in our data set who are so similar to each other. Our joke is that they're twins. They're not actually you know, biological twins, but they share a huge number of demographic characteristics and professional characteristics as well. So here's what we did. We took all of the project records in their company, they both worked for the same organization, and we took the project records. So in, in a given year, we could map out whom each of these twins worked with for a significant amount of time. Do you know how to read one of these maps? Take a look at twin one here. You may have seen these sort of network maps before, or collaboration maps. 
Every dot here represents a senior level person in the organization. So think somebody like VP and above in an organization. Um, twin one is the one who's circled here. By the way, they both happen to be men. So we'll say he to, to talk about these. It's not bias. It's just the fact pattern in this, these two particular individuals. And so he's worked with, count the dots here. It's uh, one, two, three, four, six other senior level people in the organization. You can tell they've worked together because that's what those lines signify. They were on the same project working together for a significant amount of time in this year. And the dots are color coded. So each of those colors represents a different department. And you can see twin one here. He's worked significantly with these six other people, half of whom are in his department. Um, and now take a look at twin two. Not sure if it's easy to spot or not right? Twin two, somebody who's worked as hard as his counterpart and yet is operating in a really radically different way. So what do you notice that's different here? Well, first of all, twin two is collaborating with a lot more people, many more dots here. If it shows up well on your screen, you'll see that there's many more colors. So twin two is accessing many more parts of the organization. And here's something really crucial. Twin two is choosing to work with people who themselves are well connected. Um, and what you notice as well is that his network is spread out and he's kind of off on the side. What does that mean? Well, the algorithm, the way this computer mapping, um, uh, this collaboration mapping software works is that the dots are drawn closer together the, the more projects they've worked on in that given year. So twin two has somebody like way off in the bottom right corner. He's probably only worked with that person once the entire year. It was enough time to make it onto the map, but it was just one project where there are some other people really close to him. He probably works with them repeatedly. Okay, so think about those different characteristics of these collaboration patterns. So what? Well, we wanted to know what's in it for these two folks. Who's better off? Well, we measured their business outcomes, a whole basket of what we call KPIs, right? Key performance indicators, you probably know that. And so this is how fast was their revenue growing for the projects that they were running? Um, how, uh, how, how strong were their customer relationships? Um, a bunch of team metrics to see how sustainable their teams were. And here's what we found out. As a leader, Twin2 is four times more productive. He's a better performer fourfold over his less collaborative, quote unquote, twin. Why? Well, we don't know exactly, but we can infer a lot from his collaboration pattern. He's probably drawing in lots of different ideas because he's got all these different colors of people that he's working with, right? So he's got access to new ideas and information and knowledge from across the organization. He's able to get to the right experts quickly. If he's got a question, he can reach out to somebody. And remember, he's worked directly with all these other dots on here. And he can say, hey, so-and-so, I need an answer to this. And if they don't know, they're well-connected. And I bet they do know who knows, right? So he can access lots of different parts of the organization. He's built a whole web of trust throughout the organization. People know what they can rely on him for. And um, overall, that combination of network effects and collaboration benefits adds up significantly. He's four times better off, right? So, um, you know, this is just one pair of individuals out of the millions. We've replicated this in, in bigger um, analytical, with bigger analytical approaches. And we see this as a pattern again and again and again. People who not only build this network, but know how to activate it and use it effectively and strategically, they are higher performers without a doubt. So before I, I move off this quote, I just want to, uh, off this slide rather, I just want to make sure you're not taking the wrong message from this. Our message is not bigger is better. No, better is better. Twin two is a stronger performer because he has a better network. It's richer, it's better connected, it's more diverse, and he uses it more strategically. That's the message we want you to take away from this. Heidi, before you move off that, there was a question in the chat. Um, somebody was asking just whether the uh, on the Twin 2, are people collaborating with each other more than they were with Twin 1 as well? 
Yes, 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 yes. That's absolutely crucial. Um, thank you for asking that question. Those, all those dots, those mean that those people are interconnected and collaborating with each other. Um, it's such an important point. I'm glad somebody raised it. It probably means that Twin2 is using this network really strategically because he's pulling people together onto projects and then empowering them to get on with it. Twin1 is a little bit more like a picture of a bottleneck. Everything that happens kind of comes through him, whereas Twin2 releases the energy into the network and empowers people to collaborate with each other. And it means that even though he's got this big network that he manages to maintain every year, he's really efficient in the way he works because he trusts those people to do what they're great at and he doesn't meddle. 